The title Gharib is often attributed to Imam Al Mahdi Ta'ala Faraj al Sharif. Is that mentioned in authentic reports and what does it mean? The answer is yes. That title is mentioned in uh, reports that speak about the Imam of the time. Uh, essentially, the word Gharib means stranger or uh, someone who's lonely. And uh, we have a hadith, for example, from Imam al kazim in which he refers to the Imam of the time and he says, Sahibu hadha al Amr, at Tarid al Gharib. He is the one who is estranged and alienated, and he is the one who is lonely and a stranger. So we, we do have this in our hadith. In fact, I think. You know, there are multiple ways we can address the meaning of the hadith. The Imam is gharib in that he is not known. His identity is concealed, meaning that the general public doesn't recognize him, doesn't know him. And that is a form of loneliness, especially considering the status of the Imam, his mm -hmm. actual position yep. in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's also gharib in the sense that, you know, according to some reports, and perhaps this might come up in one of the questions, I don't know. We have reports that say the Imam uh, gets married and has children and he has a family. However, um, the strongest opinion is that his own immediate family doesn't know who he is, mm. right? So his loneliness is further amplified and exaggerated by knowing that his own family doesn't know who he is. Now imagine that. And this isn't totally out of the uh, ordinary. We, we actually have examples of that in history, where some of the children of the Imam were not recognized by their own immediate family members, by their own wives and their own children. We also have people who live in extreme taqiyya in countries like Saudi Arabia and elsewhere, some Shia whose family don't know that they're Shia. So they have to conceal something that's so personal about them. So that's one manifestation of the Imam's loneliness. Another meaning and uh, manifestation manifestation of the loneliness and the estrangement of the Imam is the fact that uh, his knowledge is not taken advantage of, right? Uh, and perhaps this is more of a specialized discussion which we will leave for another time. But ultimately, when you consider the fact that we have some so-called Shia who instead of going to the knowledge of the Ahlul Bayt instead of going back to the Thaqalain that the Prophet left us with, they go and try and seek knowledge from the East or the West. They try and seek, and I'm not talking about maths and physics here, I'm talking about knowledge of the unseen, I'm talking about yeah. religious knowledge, where the Imam is abandoned in favor of, in the words of Ayatollah Sheikh Wahid Khurasani, who said that the uh, regurgitated barf of Greek philosophers is not something we should be seeking. It's not something we should be going after, right? Whether it's philosophy or mysticism uh, that we take from the East or the philosophy of the West or whatever it is, we've abandoned the Imams of the Ahlul Bayt and sometimes you find uh, books of so-called Islamic philosophy without a single hadith, without, without a single verse of the Quran, and that is, I think, an ultimate form of estrangement and abandonment that the Imam suffers from. And finally, I'll mention this one point. It's the fact that he has no supporters, right? In our traditions, Imam al Hussein alayhi salam is the only Imam who's referred to as Gharib al Ghuraba. Even though sometimes we use this title for Imam al Ridha alayhi salatu wasalam, but in our traditions, Imam al Hussein is called Gharib al Ghuraba, the most estranged person, the loneliest person. And yet, Imam al Hussein had Habib ibn Mudahar, he had Zuhair, he had uh, Burair, he had Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas alayhi salam. So Imam al Hussein, while he had those incredible companions, if he is Gharib al-Ghuraba, what does that say about Imam al-Zaman?